Hello everyone. Today we are back with our next part of the chapter fundamental unit of life cell. In this chapter we have so far studied about that a cell is made up of what type of things. A cell is made up of an outer membrane, a cell is made up of cytoplasm and the cell organelles. In our previous sections we have studied about the outer membranes that is cell wall as well as cell membrane. We have discussed their properties, uh, their function, their composition. Then we have discussed about the cytoplasm and today we are going to discuss about the various cell organelles that are found inside a cell. Now basically in our syllabus of NCRT we have two types of cell that is plant cell and animal cell. Now these two types of cell plant cell and animal cell what are the fundamental differences when we will be reading about the organelles we will be coming to know about it. So let us begin our class with the cell organelles. Now cell organelles are the small uh, you can say the functional units which are uh, doing the work for a cell so that the metabolic activities of the cell can be maintained. Like what are the organs to the body that means the organs uh, uh, they perform uh, for the body and then the organism can perform its function as a entire entity. Similarly inside the cell the cell organelles also perform various types of function as a result of which the cell can maintain its life processes and maintain its existence. Okay. Now see these cell organelles are so minute first of all the cell is so minute we cannot see it with our naked eyes except for a few you know uh, rare examples. So cell organelles were so minute that uh, it was uh, not until the you know invention of the electron microscope by Noll and Raska that uh, uh, the cell organelles were uh, you know uh, clearly seen under the microscope. So with the invention of the electron microscope the cell organelles became visible. Now most of the cell organelles inside the plant cell and animal cell are bounded by a membrane which we call it as a unit membrane. Now this membrane has the same composition like that of the cell membrane that is it is also made up of your phospholipid bilayer it has proteins in it. So uh, for the maintaining of the cell membrane there must be some system inside the plant which are actually helpful in maintaining this repairing work or making up of the membrane and all isn't it. So now this thing which are going to which we are going to study that who are those cell organelles which actually takes part or which uh, makes this uh, thing possible that is the making up of the, up of the unit membrane. Now if we talk about a plant cell, a plant cell is bounded by two membranes. The outermost one is called the cell wall and the inner one this is called the cell membrane. Okay. Next to that, uh, that is inside we know that uh, every cell has a cytoplasm. Now cytoplasm is a jelly like substance inside which all the cell organelles are residing. Now what are the cell organelles present in the plant cell? The cell organelles include the mitochondria. Now mitochondria are what? Mitochondria are the powerhouse of a cell. That means what? This will be uh, the you can say the organelles in which the oxidation of food substances takes place. When we take up any food that food is broken down into a simple form that is called glucose. Now this glucose is oxidized that means the glucose in presence of oxygen is broken down to release an energy molecule and that energy molecule is known as your ATP. Okay, So the energy molecule is known as your ATP. Now so what is this ATP? ATP means adenosine triphosphate. Now this is the energy currency which is produced inside the mitochondria in presence of oxygen that will that is the reason why mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell. You can find that the mitochondria is present in case of plant cell also. Mitochondria is found in case of animal cell also. So let us see it uh, much closer then it will be easier for you to understand. So if we look closer into the mitochondria you can find that this mitochondria is having two membranes. Okay, What are the two membranes inside you can find this uh, twisted structure which is the inner membrane this is called Christi. Okay, This is called Christi and the outer membrane is intact and the shape is almost like disc shaped or saucer shaped. So it is within this mitochondria that various other ribosomes are also present. We will be reading about ribosomes. Ribosomes are called the protein factory of a cell. So inside the mitochondria are also present certain ribosomes which will be helping to synthesize the proteins required by the mitochondria to function. Also inside the mitochondria are present 
certain DNA. Okay, so this DNA is called mitochondrial DNA. Now this DNA, what is the function of DNA? We have seen it in the previous uh, section of our video that inside the nucleus chromosomes are there and chromosomes are made up of DNA. So mitochondria has its own DNA, mitochondria has its own ribosomes. So ribosomes will help the mitochondria to, per, to make its protein and the DNA present in the mitochondria will help the mitochondria to replicate. That means it can increase its number depending upon the need of the cell. What is the need of the cell? If the cell requires to produce more ATP that is adenosine triphosphate then this mitochondria will multiply and increase its number inside the cell. So that is the mitochondria having its own DNA and the ribosomes and thus the mitochondria is known as your semi-autonomous organelle. Semi-autonomous means which is half, semi means half, autonomous means replicating that means it can divide and it can increase its number depending upon its requirement in the cell. That is why sometimes question comes in your exam that name a cell organelle which is semi-autonomous. So answer is your mitochondria. Next you can see a very important thing inside the plant cell that is called as your chloroplast. Now plastids are found in case of plant cell. And here I have drawn only about the chloroplast because plant cell uh, since they are associated with green color pigment and they are present in the green part of the plant that is why the chloroplast I have drawn. The chloroplast is also double membrane, two membranes are there and inside the chloroplast certain coin like structures are there. This individual coin is called thylakoid and when the thylakoid they make a coin after coin if you bunch it then it will make a pile of structure like this. So it will make a pile of structure like this. This structure is called the granum and the granums are connected by means of this lamellae and inside it is again some ribosomes okay and they also have their own DNA. So chloroplast or plastid inside the plant cell they also have the DNA and the ribosomes. Mitochondria also has the DNA and ribosomes. Chloroplast also is having the ribosomes and the DNA. So it is also semi-autonomous organelle. That means it can increase its number. It can divide according to the need of the cell. So mitochondria is one of the semi-autonomous organelle and chloroplast is one of the semi-autonomous organelle. Okay. And uh, since it is associated with the green color pigment chlorophyll that is why this plastid is specially named as chloroplast. Some plastids have color in them but that color is not green that means they don't have chlorophyll. They have some other pigments like xanthophyll, carotenoids. So they are colorful. Where are they found? They are found in the colored part of the plants. Like for example in case of flowers, in case of fruits which are ripe. So in them colored leaves are there, in them the chromoplastids or the chromoplasts are there. And leucoplast, leucoplast means colorless. Where are they present? They are present in the underground part of the plants. Like for example your roots, uh, underground stem. So there the leuco means colorless. So they specially store the food materials like they can store the starch, they can store the protein, they can store the, uh, store the oil. So that is for the storage purpose leucoplastids are present in the underground parts of the plant. So plastids is of three types in the plant cell, chloroplast, chromoplast and leucoplast. Chloroplast is associated with green color pigment chlorophyll, chromoplast is associated with xanthophyll and carotenoid that is the pigmented uh, things which is other than green that means orange it can be it can be red or yellow or like that and leucoplast means colorless which is present in the underground part of the plants they are basically associated with the storage function. Next you can see the plant cell has a large vacuole, okay, large central vacuole. Now vacuole is uh, covered by a single membrane, okay, single membrane and this membrane is known as your tonoplast, T-O-N-O, -O, tonoplast and inside the vacuole are present many things. Inside the vacuole what can be there? It can be water, of course water is there, minerals are there, some dissolved food substances are there, sometimes waste products are there, sometimes pigments are there, so we call it a cell sap. And it is because of this such a big vacuole and the cells are present in that, that the plant cell maintains its form. So it uh, produces a pressure on the cell wall, cell wall gives an equal and opposite pressure. So because of the two pressures, what happens is that the turgidity or the shape of the cell is maintained. If the vacuole is losing water to the surroundings, if this cell is kept in, you know, hypertonic solution, H-Y-P-E-R, hyper, 
in that case the water present in this uh, vacuole will start moving to the outside so as a result the protoplasm of the cell will shrink which we have seen in the plasmolysis okay i am not going for that next you see a very important thing nucleus which we have studied it in details in the last class any cell whether it is a plant cell or an animal cell nucleus is compulsory isn't it so nucleus is present in almost all plant cell and animal cell last day we have said that in rbc mature rbc the nucleus is not present similarly in case of plant cell sieve tubes are those cells in which the uh, nucleus is absent in case of a mature sieve tube now you see this nucleus is surrounded by a membrane which is double membrane and discontinuous with this membrane you can see there are some tube like structures these tube like structures are called as your endoplasmic reticulum okay endoplasmic reticulum we write it in short form er endoplasmic reticulum now when this endoplasmic reticulum is having the structures which are round shaped structures called ribosomes associated with it then we call it to be the rough endoplasmic reticulum and when the endoplasmic reticulum is not associated with the ribosome see here in this endoplasmic reticulum this tube no ribosomes are attached on the surface so it is smooth the surface is smooth so that is why it is called as a smooth endoplasmic reticulum so rough endoplasmic reticulum when ribosome is there and smooth endoplasmic reticulum when there is no ribosome associated with it what is the difference when ribosome is associated with endoplasmic reticulum it is involved in the synthesis of protein and when the uh, uh, that is endoplasmic reticulum is not having the ribosome it cannot produce protein then what will it produce it will produce some other compounds what kind of compounds it can produce lipids it can produce uh, glycolipids it can produce cholesterol it can produce steroids so this is the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum is associated with protein synthesis and smooth endoplasmic reticulum is associated with lipid steroid or cholesterol synthesis also these two types of you know system this is called this is a part of endomembrane system they can produce the protein they can produce the lipid so you see now plasma membrane was made up of what it was made up of phospholipids it was made up of uh, glycoproteins it was made up of proteins so all those things are produced by this uh, that is your endoplasmic reticulum and they help in the repairing and management of the unit membrane of the other organelles present inside the cell that is a function of the endoplasmic reticulum and as both smooth as well as a rough endoplasmic reticulum also uh, they make the endoskeleton system of a cell that means they give a solid structure to the cell okay so outside the cell wall is giving them rigidity and from inside the endoplasmic reticulum is forming a cytoskeleton it is called a cytoskeleton it is making a firm uh, network inside the cell to maintain its shape from inside all right next you see there is another organelle called lysosomes now lysosomes are produced from that of the endoplasmic reticulum when it goes to the golgi bodies in case of plant cell no golgi bodies do not have a definite shape they are lying freely like a tube inside the cell cytoplasm so that is why they are named as dictyosomes golgi bodies in case of plant cell have a special name the what is the name the name is called the dictyosomes okay so they are the places where the processing of these proteins will take place and they will form the lysosomes now what are these lysosomes lysosomes have some enzymes inside them these enzymes have a property of destroying the um, things which is not required by the cell suppose from outside any kind of foreign particles enter into the cell which is harmful for the cell so they will be destroyed by the lysosomes okay sometimes it so happens any kind of organelle becomes you know useless for the cell or the cell becomes mature old or the cell becomes damaged then lysosomes will do what they will burst when they will burst the enzymes present in the lysosomes they will destroy or they will hydrolyze the cell organelles and the cell will be destroyed since it burst itself so this is a kind of you know committing suicide means itself destroying the cell so that is why lysosomes are called as your suicidal bag of a cell okay so this is about the lysosome why they are called the suicidal bag and because they have some lytic enzymes that means those enzymes which will be destroying the foreign particles entering into the cell or sometimes the cell when it is becoming you know damaged or it is becoming useless or old then it will be uh, bursting itself liberating the enzymes and 
destroying the cell itself okay now this is about the various organelles associated with the plant cell now let us discuss about the animal cell in the animal cell you can see the animal cell is surrounded by only a single layers outer membrane and that membrane is known as your cell membrane it does not have a cell wall so it has only one layer and this is selectively permeable membrane that means allowing only the substances which are useful for the cell to enter and the harmful substances to go out of the cell now inside the animal cell many things are present like that of the plant cell let us see what what things are there which is similar to plant cell and what new things are there which is uh, which was not found in case of the plant cell now in case of animal cell you see the position of the nucleus is central in case of plant cell it was towards the periphery but in case of animal cell the nucleus is central now this nucleus membrane again is associated with this endoplasmic reticulum now this endoplasmic reticulum you can see that it is associated with that of the ribosomes so this is called as your rough er that means rough endoplasmic reticulum and there are certain other endoplasmic reticulum also which is called as your smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is not associated with that of your ribosomes okay so this is again the same function it is doing that is it is synthesizing your steroids it is synthesizing your lipids it is synthesizing cholesterol and this one since it is associated with ribosome so it is as associated with the synthesis of protein ribosomes are also dispersed in the cytoplasm ribosomes main function is to produce protein that is why ribosomes are called as a protein factory of a cell now the, uh, after this nucleus you see this mitochondria is present which was present in case of plant cell also so mitochondria again it will be having its uh, dna okay it will be having its own ribosomes so when it is having its own ribosomes and it is having its dna in that case it is semi autonomous and it will be also producing your atp okay that is adenosine triphosphate which is the energy currency of a cell and it can multiply according to the need of the cell lysosomes are also present in case of your animal cell the lysosomes have some hydrolytic enzymes which will be liberating themselves when the cell becomes old or damaged or any kind of foreign uh, particle like that bacteria or any kind of uh, microorganisms if it enters and it is harmful lysosome will kill it or uh, lysosome will destroy it so this is the suicidal bag of a cell it is found in plant cell also it is found in animal cell also now near to this endoplasmic reticulum see endoplasmic reticulum when produces any kind of you know protein and all it uh, goes through a specialized structure now this is the structure of the golgi bodies now this golgi bodies was being first found by a scientist his name was camillo golgi and this he actually first noticed that near the nucleus this uh, membrane structures were there now this membrane stru uh, structures or as it is called as your cisternae in that what happens it has two phases you can see the one phase is near to that of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum we call this uh, area that means this area to be the cis phase okay what is it called it is called as your cis phase so this will be called as this region will be called as your cis c i s okay this is called the cis phase where the protein will be entering where the substances will be entering passing through the cisternae or the tubules and then it will be processed in the golgi bodies because golgi bodies is the place where the processing of the proteins takes place and from the other end now this end will be called as your trans phase this is called as your trans phase okay so this one is called cis phase which is uh, near to that of endoplasmic reticulum and the end which is the other end facing towards a cell membrane that will be called as your trans phase so here you can see these vesicles which are coming out these are the processed proteins or the processed things which are required for the membrane biogenesis or for the cellular activities and all so endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies and lysosomes lysosomes are formed from golgi bodies that is the proteins which are released from the endoplasmic reticulum they are processed with the hydrolytic enzymes and they now form this kind of you know organelle which is called as your lysosomes and this will be taking part of course in the destruction of the harmful substances for the cell and all these three things that is endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies and your uh, lysosomes togetherly will form a complex what is the name of that complex it is called as your gerl okay it is called as your gerl complex 
what is this G E R L complex stands for G stands for Golgi bodies E R stands for your endoplasmic reticulum and L stands for your lysosomes so these three are always associated with each other they are always near to each other so that the processing can happen you know simultaneously endoplasmic reticulum see i have made an arrow and this one is your golgi bodies and then is the lysosomes and next one more organelle is found in case of your animal cell which was not found in case of plant cell is your centriole here you can see one structure i have drawn with some star marks or some you know ray like things coming out of it this is called centriole this structure is not bounded by a membrane sometimes this question also comes in exam name an organelle which is not bounded by membrane as it is your centrosome and the centrosome is made up of two centrioles okay so this is made up of two centrioles and what is the function of this centrosome or the centrioles they help in the division of cell cell division is actually helped by the uh, uh, the centrioles which is a part of the centrosome found in case of animal cell in case of plant cell the centrioles are absent they don't have the centrioles in them vacuoles you can see vacuoles are present in case of animal cell very rudimentary or small as um, unlike that of your plant cell which was a big central you know vacuole and sometimes some microvilli are present in case of your outer membrane that is a cell membrane they form some invaginations and foldings and they form this microvilli so this is all about your uh, the animal cell and uh, the various components of the animal cell and its uh, function so now let us see the difference between the plant cell and the animal cell in case of plant cell it is covered by two outer membranes the outermost one is called the cell wall which is non living and the inner one is called the cell membrane in case of animal cell they have only one membrane that is the cell membrane which is selectively permeable the next difference which we find in case of plant cell and animal cell is that the plant cell has a nucleus which is peripheral that means towards the periphery whereas the nucleus in case of animal cell is central that is in the center then the next thing is that in case of plant cell you have uh, organelle which is called as your plastid here i have drawn chloroplast but they have leucoplastid also they have chromoplastid also and this is associated with the process of photosynthesis in plants which is lacking in case of animal cell another difference between the plant cell and the animal cell is about the vacuoles in case of plant cell you can see such a large vacuole is present a large central vacuole is present but in case of animal cell the vacuole is very small now uh, the plant cell uh, maintains the turgidity or the firmness by the help of two things one is by the help of the cell wall and another one by the help of this vacuole vacuole has a cell sap in it it contains a lot of um, you know uh, liquid substances it has some waste materials it has some pigments so what happens is that it maintains a kind of pressure it balances the pressure which is exerted by the cell wall from outside and this one also exerts a equal pressure from here um, towards outside so it balances and such as a result the uh, cell shape the plant cell shape is maintained but if you talk in terms of the animal cell in case of animal cell the vacuole are very small so the vacuoles are mainly meant for in case of animal as food vacuole or sometimes for the removal of nitrogenous waste or the toxic substances in case of aquatic organisms like amoeba or paramecium the they have a special type of vacuoles which is called contractile vacuole which will be actually taking up the excess of water because they are living in the water surrounding so water is hypotonic it will be inside the cell it will be coming inside the cell so excess water if it is not thrown out of the cell then they will burst so that is helped by that of the vacuole and that vacuole is called as your contractile vacuole uh, in case of uh, plant cell one more thing is there that the golgi bodies which is associated with the you know formation of, uh, of the which is the processing unit actually where the protein um, gets you know processed which is uh, important for the uh, formation of membrane around any organelle or the cell membrane or anything like that so that is not having any perfect shapes so they are just tubular or cisterne uh, lying scattered within the cytoplasm so they have a special name called dictyosomes but dictyosomes means golgi bodies because dictyosomes also help in the processing which is the ultimate function of the golgi bodies next um, if you uh, see the golgi bodies uh, structure in case of your animal cell they have a specialized structure they have made up of tubules cisternae and the vesicles and they are just lying in close proximity with that of the endoplasmic reticulum and that of the lysosome so as a result they form this complex which we call it as gerl complex and it means that 
called the body's endoplasmic reticulum and lysosomes so what is released from the endoplasmic reticulum it gets processed from the cis surface and it gets uh, you know out of the golgi bodies from the trans surface and then some of them when they are having the hydrolytic enzymes or the enzymes like that of your protease uh, nucleosidase nucleotidase then your lyase and then carbohydrates all this ase 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 means they are going to destroy those compounds carbohydrates means carbohydrates will be broken down lipases means lipids will be broken down okay so the uh, nucleosidase means nucleosides will be broken down nucleotidase means nucleotides will be broken down so broke breaking destruction so those enzymes will be found in the lysosomes and this will happen when the that is the vesicles containing the things in the initial stage will pass through this tubule system and from the trans surface it will be finally processed into lysosomes and now they are active inside the animal cell to do its function that means to destroy the things which will be entering into the cell uh, any kind of bacteria any kind of harmful substance uh, it can be in the form of any protein it can be formed in the form of pollen grains any any kind of things which is harmful for the cell it, because it selects selectively permeable so even if after selection so much of selection also there suddenly you know some unwanted guest come into the cell so they have to be tackled so lysosomes will tackle them and if the cell becomes old or the cell becomes you know uh, sometimes the cell becomes injured so that cell is of no use for the body of an organism multicellular organism so it has to be destroyed so those destruction will be done by that of the lysosomes next is about uh, the um, that is yeah uh, yeah sometimes um, uh, cell membrane uh, uh, form some finger like projections which is called your microvilli now these are associated with the organs or inside some internal organs where the you know absorption or the assimilation of the substances uh, takes place not assimilation sorry absorption like in the intestine you will find the villi are there so villi will be helping in the absorption of the food substances so that is uh, sometimes this kind of modifications are seen and of course here a centriole is there a centrosome as it is called the organelle now the centrioles are the one which helps in the you know uh, formation of spindle fiber in case of your uh, animal cells so that the chromosomes uh, when they will be uh, the division of the cell the chromosomes can be held by the uh, fibers or by the threads produced by the centrioles and they can be pulled apart and they can be broken into equal half so that is a function of the centrosome and it is not bounded by any membrane remember in the cell there are two such organelles which do not have membrane one is the centrosome and another one is the ribosome so ribosome also does not have membrane centrosome also don't have membrane in case of plant cell the centriole which is a part of the centrosome is missing so how do they divide they divide by the help of within the cytoplasm itself some granular substances are there those granular substances what they will be doing is that they will be you know uh, arranging themselves and forming a thread like structure which will be actually helping the chromosomes to be pulled apart so this is the fundamental difference between plant cell and animal cell i hope you have understood and now you will be uh, you know making some short short notes about uh, the difference between plant cell and animal cell the various organelles functions and all and uh, then uh, you can answer to any questions asked from this chapter okay thank you